If you have a Bible this morning, I'd like you to open it to Romans 5.17. If you don't have one, if you'd raise your hand, someone will come around and bring you one so you can follow along in the couple of scriptures we're going to look at this morning. There's one right over here, Paul. All right. Praise the Lord. I want to talk to you about something really special this morning. I really believe this is going to reach your heart and reach your soul and help you to grow strong in the Lord. And that's, that's our job is to grow in grace, grow in faith, grow in knowledge and wisdom and revelation that the Lord wants to give us all. This is, this is what we should be doing and until the day we go on be home with the Lord in heaven. So Romans chapter 517 is going to lead into our discussion and I want to talk just for a few minutes about developing a supernatural lifestyle. And it might not be exactly what you're expecting when you hear the word supernatural because I think we've been misinformed in some cases. Matter of fact, we might even tack on a little subtitle to this message, the uh, developing a supernatural lifestyle. And I'm going to mention the good, the bad, and the ugly about this. Because we've been misinformed in some cases. But the thing that I want you to realize is that a lot of times the church has watered down the gospel so much that there, there isn't any power left in it. There isn't any supernatural. So what does the word supernatural mean? Supernatural just means that God is supernatural. He's above and beyond the natural. The Bible says God is spirit. And to us, he's everything we need. He's life to us. Jesus even said that his words were spirit and life. They're not just ordinary words. These are, you look at your Bible and you look at the pages here and we're, we're looking at Romans 5.17 and this is not just normal words. This isn't like reading a novel or a, or a science fiction book or, or somebody's uh, personal story. This is not just natural words. These are supernatural. This is above and beyond natural thinking. And this is what we need from the Lord, not just natural thinking. There actually are a lot of people that read the Bible, but they're not born again, so their spirit isn't alive unto God. So to a lot of people, and I'm talking about college professors, I've mentioned this before in here, that all the big major schools like Harvard and Yale were started by ministers, started by pastors. And they've degraded or watered down the gospel so much that you wouldn't even know that they were a Christian university at one time. So we've done that with the Word of God. We've done it with, with our religion. A lot, of, a lot of times we... And sometimes it's understandable just because life is tough. <laughs> I don't know if you all know that yet, but life can be tough. But you see, we were given something supernatural to help us go through life and actually be victorious through life. And that's what the Holy Spirit does for us. He's the great teacher. You see, if you don't have the Holy Spirit helping you, you're going to be like a college professor at Yale. And you'll be downplaying the Word of God, even saying that this is an, just an old book. It's for ancient people. It's actually ridiculous when you think about it. Because this is life-changing. It's supernatural. Romans 5.17 For if one man's offense, listen to this real close, death reigned through one. 
And we're talking about Adam here. You know that he fell in the garden. He gave in to temptation. So through one man's offense, death reigned. In other words, we all were born into this world. And this world is under the curse of sin. But, Much more, those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. There's the difference. And here's what we're introduced to in, in this sentence. And on one hand, because of Adam and Eve, in the garden, they disobeyed God and they went their own way. They fell into being just natural beings. They fell into a natural realm. Or kingdom, you could say. But Jesus came to translate us into a whole new realm. A whole new kingdom. That is opposite of this natural realm. The natural realm is, is, exists by all of our senses. Well, all but one. Seeing, tasting, touching, hearing. All, all of our natural senses and most people are guided by that. But for most of us, there's something in us. Because we were created in the image of God. There's something in us that desires more than just what we can see and feel and touch and hear. And you know that if you look around in the world we live in, people are actually desiring, even though they don't realize it, they are desiring something supernatural, above this natural world. And it's because we were created in the image of God, the creator of the universe. And you see it all the time. You can just watch television. There's shows on television that call themselves supernatural. People have this desire. They don't even know what it is. A desire to go after something more. So we read all these books. And, 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 and especially the young people. There, there's things that they are attracted to. Stories about witches. Or teachings about witches. Supernatural stuff. Out of this normal way of thinking out of the natural out of the physical we read a lot of books about vampires they have what do they have supernatural powers don't they people have this desire in them for something more but see we born again believers I just read it we were created to be supernatural to think above just the natural. We walk by faith and not by sight or feelings. Not by just the natural world. The, the Apostle Paul came on some believers that, and he said, why are you people acting like this? And they, they were filled with envy and strife and discord and division. And they were talking about each other. I'm talking about a church group. Of course, we're not involved in any of that, so we don't know that. But, but the thing about it is, even back in the Apostle Paul's day, he came upon these people that were assembling together like a church, and he said, why are you acting like just mere men? He expected to see supernatural people doing supernatural things that are not just based on what you can see and feel. Well, listen, I got up today and I just don't feel good. I, you know, I, I feel lousy. I didn't get enough sleep last night. And, uh, and, and things aren't going well. I had a flat tire on the way to church. I think I'm just going to go home and pull the covers over my head and say, forget it. We, we give in too easy and we're easily pushed back into this natural world. Too, way too easy. 
the Bible says, resist the devil. Submit yourself to God and resist the devil. It seems like the church just, they fall into this mode like, listen, uh, whatever happens must have been the will of God. It's a funny saying, really, when you think about it, because the Apostle Paul said, resist the devil. Fight the good fight of faith. He didn't say just, well, you know, whatever happens, well, it just must have been the will of God. No, sin is not the will of God, is it? Don't, don't, don't say whatever happens, because if we fall into sin, it's not God's fault, and he didn't want it to happen. Just like, didn't he tell Adam, Adam, don't do it. <laughs> and he's still telling us today, by the Holy Spirit within us, he's saying, don't, do, don't go this way, go this way. But we, if we want to be carnally Christian, which we can be, if you want to be, you can go back and slide into your old habits or old ways of thinking. Talking about, woe is me. I got all these problems. See, that, that, that's what actually happens to us a lot of times. We attract more problems by talking about it all the time. We went through this last week a little bit with the, with the people of Israel. They have these great and mighty miracles happen in their life, and they complain that we, you know, all we get is manna. What about pancakes and, and, and you know, some bagels once in a while? No, it, it seemed like they were always looking for something to complain about. Well, listen, Moses, he's up on that hill with the mount, in the mountain, and, and the Lord is talking to him. But he's taking too long. So let's have a party. Let's make a golden calf. We've, people have a tendency to fall back. If, you, if you're not on guard, the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. Don't let that stuff come creeping in. Because you'll sooner or later, you're going to stop being supernatural and you're going to go back to being natural. And then the Apostle Paul is going to look down and say, hey, why are you acting like mere men? Okay, I want to tell you three things real quick. Step one to a supernatural lifestyle is a step toward the abundant life in Christ. You see, the abundant life in Christ is already established. It's already a done deal. He went to the cross to pay for the abundant life for us. He rose from the dead to give us abundant life. So it's like, if you think about it, abundant life is over here at this table. Use your spiritual imagination. That's where it is. So if you want to be supernatural, you're going to grab your Bible. You're going to get the Word of God, hide it in your heart. You're going to listen to the Holy Spirit. When you pray, you're not going to do all the talking. You're going to let God talk to you, speak to your heart. And you're going to be taking these steps. And you're going to be walking over here toward abundant life. You see, you start out as a baby Christian, don't you? You walk over here to, to abundant life. God's will for us is to stay right here in the abundant life. All the fullness of God's grace, growing in grace, growing in faith, all these things. Not going back to think carnally minded. Like Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. Thinking spiritually minded is life and peace. Over here, where abundant life is. Life and peace. Think spiritually minded. If you want to walk over to this other side over here, it's, it's the ways of death and struggle and stress. All those things to be in the world. So actually, in the abundant life, this supernatural life, you th think of the verses that how God wants us to, to think. Colossians chapter 3 says, think on those things which are above. Supernatural. Think on those things. Don't think on the things on the world. Get, get all tied up with stuff. I like to say, 
you get all tied up in your underwear instead of being spiritually minded. It's all laid out for us, this plan to develop ourselves, walking spiritually. He says to us, over here, spiritually minded, supernaturally minded, we're, we're told to that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. That's above and beyond the natural world. And he, here, here's the amazing thing about it. You can do this spirit, supernatural thing, this supernatural life, and in this world, you're like an awesome testimony to everybody you meet. And here's what should happen, and this probably is what happens in, in all of your lives every day. People will come up to you and say, Hi, listen, things are going bad around here at work. How come you're still singing and making melody in your heart? How come you still got a positive faith attitude? I know that people are walking up to you all the time saying that, asking that question, because that's the way we are. We're supernaturally minded living the abundant life in Christ. Where, see, on the negative part of this, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly, the negative part of this is that to be supernaturally minded or spiritually minded, some people think you have to act weird. Supernatural and spiritual thinking is not weird. Supernatural is the abundant life in Christ. Thank you, Lord. I know things look bad. Things are going... I, I got a layoff notice. I, they, they said they're going to repossess my house. But thank the Lord. I'm, I'm praising you and thanking you. I got a home in heaven anyway. I got a mansion in heaven. I'm not going to give this the time of day. I'm just going to keep thanking the Lord. Looking forward to the Lord getting me out of this situation. Get a revelation from God. Not just a Bible verse. You see, the Bible is a book that's full of revelation. A, a scripture has to become alive to you. So, you know, if you're hiding scriptures and the Word of God in your heart at all times, you know what the Holy Spirit does? He illuminates one of those scriptures and all of a sudden yes that's mine I'm standing I'm not coming off of that by the stripes of Jesus I'm healed I'm not coming off of it I want it I want prosperity and abundance in my life where there used to be poverty and I'm standing on the fact that beloved above all things I pray that you prosper and are in good health even as your soul prospers the Holy Spirit will make that come alive to you. That's revelation. See, it's God revealing His Word to us. That's more than just reading your Bible. Reading your Bible is great, but you should read it prayerfully. Asking the Holy Spirit to reveal the mysteries that are hidden in you. All the treasures of wisdom, in knowledge, wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ. And Christ is the Word of God. Isn't that awesome? He is the Word of God. He is the Word made flesh and dwelt among men. We are going to get through all three of these points, but I want you to go real quickly with me to Luke chapter 4. This is the verse we started out this year talking about Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19 talking about ministry to people. What is the vision and the goal of the church? It's right here in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. And I'll challenge you. I, I'd like us all to know this verse inside out, forward and backwards. It's, it's an amazing thing to think about. Jesus said this was his ministry. Luke chapter 4. Eighteen and nineteen. Jesus said, "The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor." What's the gospel to the poor? Gospel means good news. Gospel, the gospel of the Lord Jesus, is the power of God. The good news to the poor is 
You don't have to be poor anymore. Look to me. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all your needs will be supplied by the Lord God Himself. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. You know anybody that's brokenhearted? We know a lot of people that's brokenhearted. Listen, what happens when the doctor gives you a bad report? It breaks your heart. Somebody does you wrong, it breaks your heart. You get fired from your job for the 12th time. It breaks your heart. I'm not, I shouldn't laugh about that, but it's, it's, it breaks your heart. And people need healing. They need to know where to, where to turn to. And it's to the Lord and His promises to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, here's an interesting part. Let's continue for just a minute. Verse 20. Then Jesus closed the book, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. Listen close. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. You see, if you talk about good news, if you talk with a positive faith attitude, if you talk with a supernatural attitude that things aren't just what they appear to be, but they are heavenly plans in the making, they're out here already, God has already made a way for us. Down here, it looks like there is no way. There's a supernatural way, and all eyes are going to be fixed on you. And here's the next part. He began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Now what about that? You see, people, and what happened after he said that? They were mad. They were upset. Who do you think you are? You see, if you always have a positive attitude, you're always spiritually minded, you're always thinking, there's something supernatural going to happen to me today. It doesn't look good, but I believe God I'm expecting. Just like the woman who had that blood disorder. She was expecting. Things weren't bad. She was sick for 12 years. Spent all her money on doctors. She had a supernatural expectation. That's what I'm talking about, a lifestyle. A lifestyle, not just when you go to church. I'm just going to, well, i, I got to wait until the next Benny Hinn meeting so I can get my healing. No, it's an expectation every day. It's a lifestyle. It isn't, it isn't just a one-time event. Although those are awesome and powerful and, and, and we should live that same way. You know, you, you, it's like it, we're, we're talking about two different realms here. Two different kingdoms. The natural and the supernatural. You, you think about the, uh, a Benny Hinn. Anybody ever... A scene on TV or been to a Benny Hinn meeting. Okay, there's a lot of time spent to change the atmosphere in a in a meeting like that. A lot of time. And sometimes you might think to yourself, well, are they going to sing another song? <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been there, but when I was first born again, uh, my mind was still being renewed. And I used to sit in the back, you know, I was always sitting in the back of the church. And I always used to say to myself, listen, they've already sung five songs. Are we going to move on from here? And they would sing another two songs. But, but you see, here, here's the, the transformation that needs to take place. We need to think different. You see, if you, if you want to stay over here in the natural... That's what you're going to do. All you're going to do is you're going to go, man, they're going to do it again. They've already sung this verse. This verse was already sung, even. And matter of fact, they already sang it twice. And in, in, in everything, you don't like, well, I don't, you know what? I don't like the pastor's tie either. Look at the guy. And his hair is a little messed up. And I, I definitely don't like his glasses. You sit back and you do that. It, you know what? You're not going to receive anything. You have no expectation. You're just not going to receive. So sometimes that's what has to happen. The whole realm or the whole atmosphere has to be changed. We have to get you 
out of your natural ways of thinking and into over into spiritual. So if you just simply open up your heart in a meeting like that, all of a sudden, you're different. I mean, just tell yourself that one, once or twice. Just say, all right, I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. I'm not going to criticize that lady's dress over there. I'm not going to criticize, you know. I mean, <laughs> we're not judges in a contest. It's a, it's a, it's a supernatural realm we want to be in. Go with the flow. Go with the flow sometimes. I mean, unless somebody's not teaching the Word of God, then hightail it out of that place real quick. But if, but if the Word of God is going forth, if the Word... Listen, the Bible says that God magnifies His Word above His name. And His name is above all names. So if the Word of God is being spoken... The pure Word of God, not, not somebody's ideas, but the Word of God, then go with it. Go with the flow. And, and Jesus is being glorified and lifted up. It doesn't all have to be perfect. I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but there is not a perfect church. Because you know why? There's people in it. <laughs> so if there ever was a perfect church, let's say I was searching for one. I'm on a search. I'm going from this church to that church. And all of a sudden, I found a perfect church. This is perfect. They don't make any mistakes. As soon as I become a member, it's not going to be perfect anymore. That's just the way it is. We're not perfect. But He is perfect. Jesus, the Lord, is perfect. His Word is perfect. It's supernatural. So, the point here in Luke chapter 4, 18, 19, Jesus said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Today is the day of salvation. See, a lot of churches put off until tomorrow. They, they put off till later. Listen, we'll all be supernatural when we get to heaven. But down here, and this rotten here and now? <laughs> Churches talk like that. And we shouldn't be talking like that. We are supernatural now today. The scripture is fulfilled in us today. Mark chapter 16 says, God watches over his word. And when his word is spoken, signs and wonders will follow his word. And we ought to be expecting that. We ought to be looking for that. Okay, step two. A supernatural lifestyle is a step of faith based on revelation. See, there's so much revelation in the Word of God. I mean, there's revelation even if you read some things that you think are kind of boring. This man begot this son. This son begot. And you get into the begots and the begats. You ever read the King James in Genesis? It seems to be pretty boring, but if you really studied it with all your heart, you'd find out that the lineage, the family tree of Jesus goes all the way back. All the way back. And if you studied out this begat, this, this, this son was born, and this was the son of Abraham, and this was the son of Isaac, Abraham, Jacob, it's all, it all works together. It all fits in together. And then Jesus came to rescue us from our troubles. Okay, look at Luke chapter two, 12, verse 2. Real quick. There's so many scriptures we could look at, and I've mentioned a few, but this is, this is so awesome. Luke chapter 2. Chapter 12, I'm sorry. Verse 2, it says, Now, at the vintage time, he sent a servant to the vine dressers and that he might receive some of the fruit of the vineyard from the vine dressers. This is not the scripture. <laughs> I'm, reading out, I'm reading out of the wrong gospel. Sorry. Luke. 
chapter 12. It's not going to read the same as Mark chapter 12. Okay. For there is nothing covered, this is more like it, that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be made known. See, God wants to reveal the scriptures to you. But he doesn't reveal the power of the scriptures to those who are just casual Christians. I mean casual, meaning, listen, I, I, I have a life to live, and if I accept Jesus as my Savior, then I'm going to go to heaven. I can, I can do that. I can, I can add that to my life. No, to be a follower of Christ is not an adding, you know, like adding ketchup to your hot dog. It's not like, salvation is not like that. The casual Christian that just, all I want to know is, am I going to be able to go to heaven? That's all I want to know. Then God, leave me alone. Don't go into my schools. Don't go into my work. Don't go into my house. Just, I just want to know I'm going to heaven. That's a casual Christian. He's never going to get a revelation from the Word of God. You see what I mean by that? God does not reveal the, the mystery. See, the Bible is talked about that the kingdom of God is like a mystery. And Jesus always gave parables talking about, and the secret things belong to the Lord. But this verse right here says God desires. It's, it's his will that the secret things be revealed to those who are serious about the kingdom of God. If you're really serious, you're going to get a lot of answers to your questions. Now, I don't know that we'll know everything until we get to heaven. Like, where did God come from? Don't ask me that one. I don't know. <laughs> but he's always been. He has no beginning and no end. I believe that with all my heart. I don't understand it yet. But when I get to heaven, I will know as I've been known, the Bible says. But the secret things, see these secret things, some people will say, I don't understand this thing about by Jesus stripes I'm healed. How can I go to the doctor, get a bad report, and then confess the word of God? And how does that work? Listen, if you're not serious, if you just want it, the magic wand to be waved over your head and you understand everything all at once, it's not going to happen. The Bible is not magic. The being supernatural is not magic. Some people think it is. Some people just said, well, if God wants me to have something, then he'll just give it to me. No, no, he won't. It's like salvation. If you don't want to be born again, God is not going to make you get born again. If you don't want to go to church, God is not going to come down and make you go to church. It's not going to happen. You have to go with your own free will because God wants people who really love him. Really have a desire to know more about him. It, you know, it's like two people that are in love and they want to get married you know you go through a time where you get to know the person and, you know hopefully if you get to know them a lot you might not marry the person because they're trouble <laughs> but knowing someone is so important that's why God created us in the first place he wanted a family he wanted a family this is good can I keep going to point number three or should I wait for next week <laughs> okay, number three. Whoops, where were we all we are on? Three, okay. Okay, then I skipped two. You see, let me do the clicker. Okay, supernatural. <laughs> okay, okay, this is step three then. Step three, I already talked about it, didn't I? Wholehearted commitment. It's the same thing with anything in life. Anybody watching the Olympics? Listen, I'll tell you something. The person who stands on the platform and has the gold medal placed around their neck, were they a casual skier? 
just a casual, listen, listen, I go out and I practice my figure skating and my triple spins on the weekends. No, you don't. If you're going to win the gold, you're going to go for the gold and it's going to give your all to the gold. Yeah. You're going to be practicing every day. Six, eight hours every day. You see some of those figure skaters? Flipping and turning and spinning around. And they spin. What amazes me is they spin three times. They land and spin again. Man, if I just spun three times on the platform, I'd probably be falling down, dizzy. I don't know how you, you know, you know what it takes? Commitment. Commitment. Wholehearted commitment. You know, I, I, I mean, I like sports. And it's, it's really like life. Sports are like life. If you want to get something out of anything, you have to put a lot into it. And in, in the case of the Bible, it's your heart. It's not your strength. You don't have to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. To, to walk in the things of God. You don't have to be the smartest man in the world to get revelation from God. You don't have to have degrees. You don't have to prove yourself in any way. You simply have to believe, don't you? You believe and receive what He's already done. But you have to believe it with your whole heart. You know, if, you, if you're just a casual person and just say, listen, you know, I, I can't spend too much time at this stuff. You know, it's just, it's just, it's cramping my lifestyle. I know pe most of the time people don't say that, but that's what they mean. Listen, I got a boat, I got a cabin, I got, I got stuff in my life. I have very little time for church. That's not a going for the gold kind of a guy, is it? No, so sports kind of tells you where it's at. You know, if you're not going to put anything into something, you're going to get very little back. That's the law of the Word of God, the Bible.